This is my first video about the Raspberry Pi and the Sense Hat. Um, I'm deciding to make the video here using the emulator. Uh, it's easier to make a screen recording than to grab my camera and record the actual Raspberry Pi and Sense Hat, but maybe I'll be able to include some of that in the video too. I do not know at this point. So uh, if you wanted to try the Raspberry Pi uh, without and with the Sense Hat before you buy it. Um, there's a, an amazing emulator, which is what I'm using right here. You can go to trinket.io slash Sense Hat um, to program in Python and test out your code over here on the emulated Sense Hat. Um, so the very first line of code you're going to need in your script is uh, the following. So from uh, Sense underscore Hat import sense hat. What that's doing is it's importing all the the libraries and classes that um, the sense hat uses to run. Uh, the next thing you want to do is set up your sense object. So to do that you can just say sense equals sense hat with a capital S and a capital H. And that creates the object, uh, the sense hat object that we're going to use to run our code. Um, I think we have open and close brackets there too. All right, so we've created our sense hat. Um, the first thing I like to do at the start of a program where I'm using the screen is clear the screen. Um, and you do that just by typing sense.clear and then open close bracket. Uh, and that makes sure that all the LED lights in the, in the matrix uh, turn off. And the reason I do that is um, if you don't clear the screen and you leave um, one of the LEDs on, they'll persist on. Uh, even when you change and run new code. So I like to turn it off. All right, so uh, let's turn on one pixel. Our matrix of lights here uh, is eight by eight, and each column is numbered starting at zero. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to the end here. And then our, our rows here are also numbered starting at zero through seven. So if I wanted to turn on this pixel right here, I could say sense, so I'm calling my um, sense object, and I'm going to pass it the command set pixel, and then I can specify which pixel. Actually, it, the, one of the great things about this emulator is it shows you all. It predictively shows you um, things about the uh, call you're about to do. So I can see I need to give it an X and a Y. That's the location of the light we'd like to turn on. And then I give it a red, green, and blue value. So RGB stand for red, green, blue. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to say I want to turn on pixel 00. That's the one under column 0, and it's the one in row 0. Uh, and if I wanted to turn it on and make it fully bright, as bright as it can be, I would go 255, 255, 255. The values for colors, which I'll talk about a little bit more, range from 0 to 255. If I push run, I should get a white light turning on on that very first pixel. Let me just talk a little bit more about the colors. So these are red, green, and blue, and in additive light color theory, you add red, green, and blue colors together, and if you add full intensity red, green, and blue, you get white. If I was just to add red full, green, and blue off, zero is off, and run that, I should get a red light. And likewise, I should get a green light. And, oops, a blue light. Now, it's a big pain in the butt to continuously type those numbers and remember exactly what they mean. So often what I do when I get started on a project is I'll define each of these colors like this. So I'll say red is 25500, green is 255, oh sorry, 0, 255, and don't forget that you need open close brackets, you need commas in there, and B would be 0, 0, 255. And then if I wanted to turn this light on and have it blue, instead of having this, I could just put B. I've defined a variable called B, which is this, and I can replace that text with a B, and I should get that. Or, now in the future, if I wanted it green or red, I just do that. 
Um, one other thing I like to do is I like to define x as everything on full, so 255, 255, 255, which is our white light, and off, which I like to say as O, which is just sorry, 0, 0, 0. So if I wanted everything on, I would put x. If I wanted it off, I would put O, not to be confused with 0. You can tell the difference because uh, and all numbers turn blue. Okay, so that's how you set one pixel. Let's say I wanted to turn on a different pixel. Uh, let's make it. Let's go back to um, red. Uh, let's turn on this pixel right here. So I look at my columns, and that's one, two, three, four columns over. But we start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, and it's down zero, one, two, three as well. So that would be pixel 3, 3. Let's say I wanted to turn on another pixel. I could paste that same command. Let's go, uh, let's go 4, 4. And make that one blue. And run. And you can see these two are on. Let's do 3, 4 and make that one green. Now, if I wanted to light up this whole board with different colors for every um, every light, that's going to take me a while if I'm using the set pixel command. What I can use instead is a set pixels command. So if I call sense.set underscore pixel, if I start typing this, sense.set, usually my predictive thing comes up, but the command is set pixels, I can define an image and have it appear here. Now the way this command works is I give it 64 different numbers, starting with the one here on the left, moving right, and then down. And that's a lot of work. So I'm going to show you how I find... I'm going to show you how I find it to be easier to do. I like to define a picture that I before I display it. So I set up a variable called picture, and I say picture equals, and I use square brackets. And what I do is I either choose red, green, or blue, or on or off to define my picture. So let's say we wanted to make, um, I don't know, like a smiley face type thing. I'm going to speed this part of the video up. But remember, zero or O is off. X is on. So I've, I've tried my best to make sort of a circular-ish shape. Um, it'll be sort of a boxy, curved-looking square. And then to make that appear here on the screen, I'm going to just say sense.setPixels, and I'm going to write the word picture. This should work. Oop, take off caps lock. Picture. Let's see what happens. And I can see exactly what I forgot to do was I need to have commas at the end of each of these values. So that was my mistake. I don't think I need a comma there. Let's try. There we go. So you can see I've made a circle kind of thing. Now if I wanted, the reason I like doing it like this is it lays it out exactly the same as the matrix appears here. So if I wanted to turn a couple, a couple lights on to make eyes, I might turn on that one and this one. Now when I push play I've got eyes. And then if I wanted to give it a mouth, or maybe I'd go some X's here. 
Oops, that should be capital X's, not lowercase. Let's see what that looks like. And now I have kind of a grumpy looking face. Maybe if I wanted to make him smile, I'll turn on these two as well. Hey, that's a little happier. Um, okay, so there is. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn off these two. Haha, -ha, smile. Um, so there you go. That's how I can define a picture. Now, I could go through and change these into different colors as well. You'll notice the commands that I initially run here aren't appearing on the screen anymore. Um, and that's because it sets the pixels and then immediately goes and defines the, the entire picture and then sets the pixels, including both on and off commands, which turns off the original uh, red, green, and blue pixels that I'd lit up here. If, I, um, if you want to see that happen with a bit of a delay, I can import, uh, there's a library called time. I think I'm doing this right. I'm going to say import time. And then here, in between defining our picture, uh, we'll say uh, time.sleep. And then in here, we'll specify a one second delay. And then you'll see these pixels light up. It'll wait one second before drawing the picture. Let's see. There are the pixels, and there's the smile. And that's how you can create a picture on the screen. Just to take this one step further, let's say we wanted to do a very brief sort of animation. Let me just, um, I'm going to move the eyes a little closer together here. Get rid of that. Oh, that should be an O, not a zero. And I'm going to move the smile over a little bit here. Actually, that should look good. So here we go. We've got our eyes, and they're going to be looking left. I'm going to make the eyes look left, and then pause for a second, and then look right. So instead of calling this picture, I'm going to call it picture, or maybe I'll call it face. And he's facing to the left, so I'll call it face left. Um, when I define variables, I like to keep, well, it's important that you keep it all one word with no space, but I like to use what are called camel caps, where the second word starts with an uppercase le letter. Okay, so let's define one called face right. Now, because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy this stuff and paste it here, and then just make some changes. So there's my face looking to the left, and I'll just go in here and define it to look to the right just by literally changing the position of the eyes in the, in the matrix. So here we're going to say, okay, uh, face left. You can see it knows my variable name there. It was popping up in the predictive text. It knows that it can receive that kind of variable. And then we'll pause again. So I'll say time dot sleep and we'll delay it by, let's say, two seconds. I can also define with decimal numbers there. So I could say uh, 0.5 seconds. And then we'll say face right. OK, let's see what happens. There's our pixels, face left, two second delay, face right. There we go. And that's how you can draw pixels and pictures on the 8x8 matrix of your sense hat.